And the the other thing that I, I wanted to talk about today is spooky games. And the game I want to share with you is something that I think I played a long time ago and haven't played it for a long time and then suddenly came back uh, and played it. And I've actually got on my bookcase both the old and the new version um, of the game. So I've literally got them both. So let me let me grab the old version. So you know what's coming next. It's always the same. Just need to... Oh, hang on. Let me take that off because I don't want that on the... Oh, no, come off. There you go. There you go. Clip done. So this is Call of Cthulhu, and it was published by the Games Workshop. And it's actually, I thought it was done by um, Casium. Um, but obviously, to start off with, it wasn't. And I have to say, I have to say, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure how we came across Call of Cthulhu. I, I really don't know, because it's based on the books of H.P. Lovecraft, and who writes to say that they write um, horror books is not exactly correct. It is a form of horror, but it's more sort of like massive world domination and things like that. And I think one of the reasons I got it is was it it was winner best role playing game. OK, it actually got a whole load of rewards when it came out. And I think that's that's why um, I got it. Um, but it was a really interesting book because I um, game because I think when I was actually when I'd actually bought Call of Cthulhu, I was still quite young. I would be in my teens or my early 20s. And so I, I think the. Um, our role playing was not is exactly role playing. I think it was more dungeon crawls. There wasn't a lot of puzzles. Um, well, there were puzzles or and traps down dungeons, but there wasn't a lot of role playing. We used to have you know, like multiple characters to play, and it it wasn't a lot of interaction or drama or dramatics it was very much so like i go up to the door i check if the door's locked the door is locked i look through the keyhole is there any light coming through the keyhole i pick the lock we go in what's there there's six goblins okay there's six of us we'll take one each and things like that it it was real sort of like basic stuff and when call of cthulhu came along it was it was meant to be a lot more of a mystery and a lot more role playing. And I don't think I was actually ready for it then. The other difficulty that I had with the game is that it was um, set in the 1920s. And that really I had real um, not problems with it, but real issues with it in the sense that I didn't know anything about the 1920s well that's a lie i probably i probably knew charleston you know i probably knew the charleston and and that literally was was it and so it, it was it was really um really really um difficult um to sort of like imagine um what what was actually happening um etc and then the final thing that really sort of like um, made it difficult was the fact that it was set in America. OK, so it, it, it was it, it was really, really difficult because I didn't know um, much about America or anything like that. So. The, the first thing it was, was that it was, um, there was a lot of issues about the game. But um, this is the box set, like I said, and this is what you got. So this was 
the second edition. So I don't know if anybody ever had the first edition. And it was quite, um, it's, it's got that musty smell uh, for still. And it's, it's interesting. They, everything rested on sanity. Okay. And as you saw more and more horrific things happening, your sanity went down until you had seen so many nasty things that you actually went insane and you were carried away. You know, and that was it. So you did improve your skills, but the more you got to know about the Cthulhu mythos, the madder you became. And, and so it really was like that. So, so that was, and this is meant to be Cthulhu, I think. Um, there's actually, and I might be wrong in this, but he's meant to live or it's meant to live under sea somewhere. And there's meant to be a, a place under the water in the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean where he's meant to live. And that's it. So I actually, um, I, I sort of like struggle to sort of like think of um, adventures to do um, because it was totally unique. So what I started to do was to actually buy um, adventure books. So um, this one is Ghastly Adventures and Your Diet Law. And so I actually bought this. And I don't, I think, and this is the really weird thing, I think I've actually covered it in sticky back plastic. I don't know if anybody remembers sticky back plastic, but if you look at it, can you, can you see up there? Can you see where I folded it across? And you can see it's very shiny on the front and dusty. Um, so this was a companion that I got that had um, a whole load of adventures in, which, which was brilliant. I did, I obviously um, splashed out because I bought Shadows of yog Sothoth, a, cam a global campaign to save mankind. So this was like a huge global campaign. I don't think I ever, I don't remember uh, playing it uh, at all. Although, and I have to really um, careful here. I did find some character sheets in it. And I think I might have um, used this at university. Um, this was um, uh, Charlotte Huntington Smythe, who was a British lawyer. Um, and then there's um, Storm Rafferty, um, a parapsychologist. And it, there are, there, it's not my writing. I don't know if you can see it on the back. It's all in paper form, of course. And then there's uh, Victoria Falls, a private eye. And then there's also a whole load of notes that people have made about the adventure. And I don't think, it doesn't look like my writing I, I'm sure it's not my writing. So I must have started to actually um, DM or GM this um, campaign book. In here as well, there's some little things. Look, um, so this is uh, an exercise book with Call of Cthulhu written on it. And I obviously started to use it for certain things. Um, I've started to write out in my best handwriting what what happens. And there's also some um, adventures. The Egyptian mum mystery. Okay, the Egyptian. Here it is in my best handwriting, look. Because, of course, we didn't have computers or type... We had typewriters, but not computers. So I thought I would just read you this egypt the land of the fair pyramids and the flowing nile great riches and deadly curses a lifelong friend an archaeologist called professor stephen howard has contacted you from cairo and has invited you to come and see a newly discovered tomb 
This fact alone does not really justify the expenditure of a trip to Egypt. But the tomb itself has all riches and treasures and body left in it, and also a weird and wonderful transcription wrote in some strange symbols on the wall, and this makes the trip worthwhile. So you start to pack up, pack your cases once again to go on another exciting trip, not knowing what wonders you will find. I, I think I write quite good uh, um, stories, I, I must admit. So, so that, that was all, that was uh, an adventure there. I really have no idea. I mean, all of a sudden... I, I have a bit of paper like that, which I have no idea what that is. This is, um, oh, this, these are interesting. So, so this is an adventure, Gibson's Journal. And what I've added to this is that I've actually, can you imagine this? I've actually written letters um, to give to the players. Uh, this is from the Mackenzie's house, um, Gregor, Scotland. My darling Elaine, success. I have been able to find a family who live near the loch and apparently they know a lot about the monster in it. But the family have a few refused to talk to me and they have even threatened me. A young member of the clan um, called Liam McAllen. I cannot return now or leave this place since in the investigation is hotting up and I am very close to the conclusion of the case. Please, Elaine, do not worry and please could you get hold of a book called The Standing Stones of Great Britain and one called Unsus uh, It's not like a, a Scottish name and I will write soon. So, I mean... These, all my love, daddy. And there, there's another one there. So, I mean, I must have written these um, for people to sort of like use and go, and you know, as sort of like props for, for the game. Um, there were some um, pictures, cards for our floor plans. And then there was just sort of in here, there's just sort of like some sheets and then more and more um, adventures, more and more adventures. I'm just wading through all the adventures. Um, this, oh, this was a, a world map that came with it, which I had, which was nice. And then it honestly, it's just more and more and more adventures. There's more and more adventures. And then finally, right down at the bottom, there's another another um, adventure. And it's called Nightmare in Norway. And I don't think I've actually um, used this one. But I must have read it because I've highlighted a whole load of things there. So that, that was the original Call of Cthulhu um, set that came out with, um, not all these books came with it. I, I've obviously bought some books. But the interesting thing is that um, Call of Cthulhu is still played and it's still, um, still played in a lot of places. And we... Um, we actually started to play um, the game. Um, it was some of the original members of the cast um, that actually sort of like came along. And there's no sound on this, but um, you can see here's the original cast. And I actually set it up in um, Victorian times. Um, sort of like um, all to do with um, the, I think it was called um, the gaslight era. Here it is. So I found I found this book, and that that's what we sort of like um, based it on. And so there was Aaron Weber 
Willard Peabody and Dr. Gordon King there. And uh, we we adventured in um in Victorian Britain, which, which was a lot of fun. And I have to say, I even bought um the up-to-date version of um Call of Clear Who. So th this is the the modern version. It came in two um, two books like this, and I think I've spent far too much on role playing games. Um, but it was real seriously. It was really nice to get um, back into that sort of like that problem, that problem based. Um, game when people are trying to figure things out and I think I've always really liked that and I know in my Mithras campaign I often go down that mystery trying to solve a mystery trying to figure out and there was two things that I two of the things that I really liked about Call of Cthulhu um, was that what, the first one was that it wasn't sort of like um, go away and shoot people. It was, you know, if you came across anything nasty, then, then that was it. And But the, the other thing that was really um, nice about it was some of the dice rolls um, because they actually had a dice roll called um, Idea. And what the idea role meant was that if the party was, you know, really stuck about something, then they could roll idea an idea role and that would actually help them figure out um, what was going on. I must admit, when we came back to um, actually um, playing the the game, there, there was... Um, there was a huge amount of um, enjoyment. Um, I think um, this um, this was my um, th this um, adventure that I'm just going to show you a clip of. Uh, I won't play the sound or anything. Um, this was uh, my um, favorite um, adventure. And it's interesting, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got the Call of Cthulhu um, start stream will be starting soon, sort of like. Um, I've got that sort of like start off. And I think, let's see if we can find it. I even made uh, an introduction um, to it. It, it. This is the introduction. I don't think you can... I don't think you can actually um, hear it, but you, you can see it uh, as it goes. And I love making like introductions like this and things like, so this sound and then it drips blood. If you watch it, all of a sudden it drips blood. It took me ages to work that out. And then the characters come up in this sort of like shaky thing. And I really like the way it transitions. There's Chugga Wugga with a, a bucket on his head, uh, playing Willard P.U. Body. And Longshanks playing Dr. Gordon King. And I, I really, I, and that's me as the keeper. And I, I really like things like that. I must have been really hot look. Because I actually, um, I've lost like the uh, the jacket and everything. And I think, uh, I don't think Chugga Wugga was here uh, that day. But there's there's a wonderful, I'm just um, uh, trying to find it. There's a wonderful um, um, vi um, picture um, at one point. Uh, it's probably right near the end because it must have been like a, a bit of a cliffhanger I would have thought um, but it, it actually came to the part of can, can you see all the fails down here fail 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 <laughs> there wasn't a lot of success that day and it, it, it's really interesting because somebody actually impales themselves on 
on uh, some spikes. And I, I there, look, I, I don't... I, I don't know if you can see it in the background. So that was sort of like the, the highlight of that was the cliffhanger. Look at Mr. Pickle's face and say, what? What? So, yeah, that that was um, Call of Cthulhu. Now, I, I must say I really love that sort of like um, style um, of um, gaming. Uh, the only thing that I wasn't very up on was the, the actual stories of H.P. Lovecraft. I didn't really read any of those. But interestingly, there was a, um, a Kickstarter um, done not so long ago by um, people uh, of Mithras um, fame. And there's, they became a another sort of like... Um, spooky Call of Cthulhu game um, that came out called Casting the Runes, um, which is sort of like linked to um, Mithras. So, yeah, so I probably wasn't ready for Call of Cthulhu when it first came out. But since then, I've grown to love it. And I must admit, over that summer holidays, um, I was actually doing Mithras D&D 5th Edition Call of Cthulhu and Shadowrun. I was actually playing, DMing all of them and actually making up adventures for every single one. So it was quite a busy time for me, but a really fun time uh, as well. Okay, so that's coming to the end of the stream. So first things, thank you so much for coming along. Um, just to remind you, I'll probably um, remove the first bit of the um, video or I might split it up and use some of it for content. And then this second part will be um, live um, again. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming along and joining in. I hope that's been interesting and you've enjoyed looking back on the games. Remember, the next one of these will be the first the first Monday in every month. And if anybody's got any ideas what they think I could do on YouTube um, as in a, a live stream, then do let me know. It'd be fantastic to hear from you and to see where you would like me. Thank you, Darth. Thank you for being there. I really do appreciate it. And do check out this afternoon's uh, Minecraft uh, on the VOD. Um, it was a fun session. I captured one of it, um, a little clip that was um, fantastic. And we got a new member. We got a new member coming onto the Minecraft stream as well, which is fantastic. So, yeah, um, thank you for coming along, everyone. Thank you hugely for all your support i really do um, appreciate it and value um, every last bit of it so thank you so much for that um, i will be streaming tomorrow afternoon on twitch um, for more minecraft one o'clock to three o'clock and then tomorrow evening um six o'clock to nine o'clock we'll, i'll be struggling with my guardian once again so fingers crossed that we could actually make uh, and make our way forward that would be fantastic until then please 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 make sure that you look after yourself stay safe and stay healthy but most importantly especially in these difficult times make sure that you stay positive and i will catch you all later thank you so much for being here i really do appreciate it and have a wonderful evening see you later Bye bye